I think release dates are at the core of a lot of problems in the video game industry, and we'd be better off if we just got rid of all of them. So the release of Cyberpunk 2077 has, has picked off a lot of the scabs of video game controversies past. Crunch, harassment of writers and journalists and developers, even fans. All of that has come up in this discourse cycle around Cyberpunk 2077. And this might be crazy, but a lot of those problems have something to do with the game's release date. When you have a game and the release date keeps getting pushed back, what that means is that the scope of the project is changing, that the developers are overworked. There are a lot of challenges in the production. Being behind schedule on a release date encourages developers to put out a, a minimum viable product. There are a lot of reviewers and people who have had time with the game who have pointed out that the Cyberpunk 2077 doesn't really feel done. Bad artificial intelligence, the fact that the cars go in loops as opposed to following any particular kind of logic, all of that feels like part of the minimum viable product mindset. Get out something that looks like it's working right without it actually being fully fleshed out. Game developers also have to deal with and I'm gonna be as charitable as possible. A player base that is really, really sensitive to hype and expectations. It sets up this strange incentive when you have a release date that you have to hit that says, let's put out this game so that people don't get mad. As opposed to what we actually want from game development, the thing we, we want when we sit down to play a game, which is let's release a game that makes people overjoyed, that makes people pleased to be playing. Johnny, did you see what happened? Something feels off here. You don't say. I started thinking about this idea when my coworkers were reviewing Cyberpunk 2077, and they had just about a week to do it. A decade ago, half a decade ago, if an outlet was getting review code just a couple of days before a release or even on release day, that meant something sneaky was going on. That something was totally wrong and the publisher didn't really want you to know that. And now it's sort of become the default. Just imagine you're playing an open world RPG, an ambitious one at the, the cutting edge of next gen graphics and tech, supposedly. And you've got you know, five days to play it. And then you need to give a serious assessment of how the game plays. That sounds terrible. That sounds so bad. And the thing that I was noticing was that in parallel to my coworkers playing Cyberpunk, I was enjoying Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And so I play it, you know, a couple hours every other day or so. I'm getting a real kick out of it. And I think that that is how most people play video games. The idea of reviewing a game that's going to be played in a completely different way doesn't really make that much sense. There are some really big issues at play here. One of them is marketing and one of them is the way that the internet works. The goal of marketing is to be kind of vague and to empower the player's imagination. If you're the kind of player who, you know, likes to rat it up in a corner, just sitting there with a shotgun, and I get a chance to play the game early and I say, they've gotten rid of all the shotguns and they penalize players for sitting in corners. That's a lost sale. Marketing departments don't really want people to know the specifics early on. I don't think that's an insidious or evil thing. That's just kind of the goal. They want to hype something up. The other issue is how the internet works. Around the release date of a game, you'll search for the title of that game and you'll get all of the information, reviews, tips, guides, what have you. But the further you get away from that release date, the fewer people are searching for that game usually. And so the idea of spending a month to gestate on a game and then really think carefully about what's happening, that possibility doesn't really exist because the internet kind of disincentivizes it. So what are the alternatives to having a release date? One of them is, you know, we've seen a lot of this over the past decade, I think most famously, with Minecraft is the early access approach. People are playing and word of mouth builds, goodwill develops and the developers are responsive to player requests and 
player demands. And then eventually the game comes out. The developer says, yeah, we're, you know, we're just about ready. It's in a finished enough state. People have been playing it. They seem happy. Here you go, it's done. But the other option is the Nintendo model where for months, years, you don't tell anyone what you're up to. And then, you know, a week before the game comes out, bam, there's the announcement. It's here, it's coming a week from now. And then when you load into the game, the standard of quality is usually pretty high. You don't have to worry about game-breaking bugs or any serious issues plaguing your playthrough. And this, I think, is where the players come in. Getting rid of release dates, sure, on the most technical level, that's about publishers saying, we don't have a hard release date for this anymore, we're just going to publish the game when it's done. But another part of it is kind of the fear of missing out. At the very least, the day one purchase doesn't really make that much sense. You could get what happened with Cyberpunk, which is that so much of the game just kind of cracked under pressure and, and tore apart at the seams. And a lot of players were really not equipped for that reality. Games journalists are you know, kind of cynical about games sometimes because they cover hype cycles for a living. That's their job. And at a certain point, the effect dulls a tiny bit. They're not quite as amazed by every new thing. And I think more players should start adopting that stance. The one thing that gamers, I think, are empowered to do is stop treating release date as some kind of deadline by which they need to make a purchase. I'm sure you guys have a lot of opinions on this subject, so let me know what you think in the comments below. And is like and subscribe corny to do now? Like and subscribe.